In 2034, scientists tried to bend light into matter. The experiment failed, but the laser beam didn't disappear. It stood still in midair. They said it was impossible, but what they saw wasn't light anymore. All right, let's dive right in. So what exactly is a laser? I mean, you have seen it a thousand times in movies. Zzz, a beam of light slicing through metal walls and occasionally bad guys' egos. <laughs> But what is it really? Let's break it down. The word laser is actually an acronym. It stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Yeah, I know. It sounds like something you'd find scrabbled on a glowing console in a starship. But it's real science. We are talking about atoms getting exciting, literally, and releasing light in a hyper-organized, disciplined way. Now, unlike normal light that just kind of explodes in all directions, like a toddler with finger paint, laser light is focused. It's like a navy seal team of protons. They move in unison, same direction, same face, total in sync. You could almost imagine whispering, all right boys, eyes forward, let's burn a hole in reality. But in Tron Ares, these lasers, they're not just focused, they're practically alive. They're warping around characters, solidifying into shapes, creating that looks like glowing armor made of light. That's when you go, wait, light can do that. And the physics nerd inside you goes, not really. See in the real world, lasers can cut through steel if they are powerful enough. They're used in surgery, data transfer, even measuring the distance to the moon. But no, they don't usually form holographic motorcycles to turn into solid constructions. You can punch someone with it. That's where the sci-fi magic kicks in, and I love it. Honestly, I get inspired by stuff like this. In my own sci-fi scripts, I like to imagine what would happen if light could actually gain mass under extreme quantum conditions. Like, what if energy got so compressed that protons started behaving like matter? I called it in one of my stories, Photon Collapse Theory. Sounds real light. That's the trick to make it feel real enough to hook the brain, even if it's complete fiction. And let's not ignore the poetic side of light. Think about this. Light has no mass, yet it travels faster than anything else in the universe. It doesn't ask permission. It just goes from the core of the distant star to your retina. It's a free agent. So when sci-fi gives a personality, when it becomes armor or a vapor or a getaway, that's storytelling blending with theoretical physics and maybe a dash of caffeine-induced imagination. So back to the throne, back to the throne. What we are, what we are seeing isn't really a laser. It's light pretending to be matter, a sort of energetic illusion turned into drama. Physics says, hey man, light doesn't do that. But Tron says, hold on my neon. <laughs> and you know what? I'm all for it. Because when science and storytelling dance together, that's when sci-fi truly shines. And who knows, maybe in the future, when we have unlocked new states of matter or found exotic particles, something like a solid laser won't seem so ridiculous. But until then, let's enjoy the glow, laugh at the overkill, and secretly wish we had a light cycle of our own, because I know I do. Okay, now let's take a step back from neon motorcycles and glowing frisbees and talk about real-world lasers, because while the Tron Ares lasers look like something forged in a digital Olympus by electric gods, reality is a little less dramatic and a lot more grounded. So here is so here is the thing. In real life, lasers are absolutely everywhere, but they are not shooting lightning bolts in the alleyways or slicing tanks in the half. They are in your DVD player if you if anyone still uses those. They are in barcode scanners, eye surgeries, industrial metal cutting, and even in those light speed fiber optic cables that let you binge 12 episodes of a series at 3 a.m. without buffering. Real lasers are ironically kind of introvert. They don't explode with power. They just quietly and precisely do their job. In Tronaris, though, lasers are magicians. No, more like digital wizards with attitudes. They form structures out of light. They act like matter. They deflect, they explode, they glow a lot. It's like watching the northern light of full MMA. <laughs> 
but let me say it gently. That's not how light works. Light doesn't gain mass just because you crank up the CGI budget. But hey, I get it, sci-fi isn't a documentary. It's about the vibe. Still, sometimes I wish Hollywood would stop pretending lasers are basically magic hands because in science, they are not flashy. They are disciplined, focused, efficient. If lasers had a personality type, they'd be INTG. Now, in my own sci-fi writing, I try to bridge this gap. Let's say I want a laser weapon. Cool, but it's not just a laser, but it's part of an exotic particle system. Or maybe it's not light at all, but a beam of phase-shifted matter that behaves like light under specific gravitational compression sounds wild, right? But at least I try to anchor it in something because good sci-fi doesn't just invent. It's built from real science and then twists it. Honestly, if you asked a physicist what they thought about solid lasers, they'd probably rise in eyebrow and sigh. Real laser beams don't solidify. They don't wrap around to people or build glowing suits. They know lasers sword building protocol in the standard model. And let's not forget, light doesn't slow down and hold shape unless it's interacting with something like a Bose-Einstein condensate. And that's not happening in a digital stillscape. While people are flying off walls, still you know what makes me crankle. When people start talking about weaponized lasers as if they are the next lightsaber revolution, like we're gonna patrol the borders with drones shooting lasers. Sure, buddy. Just to make sure your drone has a PhD in the thermodynamics in a flawless cooling system, or you are just burning air inefficiently looking dramatic. To be fair though, the military does experiment with directed energy vapor, but they are bulky, energy hungry, and not exactly the sleek handheld devices we see in movies. Think more giant refrigerator with a laser pointer and then Iron Man's palm blast. So here's what I love doing in my scripts. I take real experiments like the gold foil experiments that revealed the atom st structure or the way alpha particles interact with atomic nuclei and I build story elements around them. Maybe a character discovers a new state of matters using high frequency coherent light. Maybe a failed experiment collapses space between molecules. Maybe laser technology interacts with dark energy in unintended ways. Boom science becomes storytelling. That way, when my audience sees the tech, it feels real enough to wonder about, even if it's not. And what, to me, is what sci-fi should do, spark curiosity, not just oh. So no, real world lasers won't build your glowing dream armors, but they'll scan your groceries, cut titanium and help explore the universe with precision we couldn't dream of 100 years ago. That's not bad for a boring beam of light, right? All right, now let's talk about the real fun stuff, the veil lasers are portrayed in movies, specifically Tron Ares. You know the moment I'm talking about beams of light flying like divine arrows, slicing through digital chaos, turning pixels into power. It's cinematic, it's beautiful, it's completely badass, and I love every second of it. Here is the deal. In movies, lasers are never just light. No, they are personalities. They hum, they sparkle, they pulse with anger or righteousness. If they were people, they'd have the music and fan clubs. I mean, trans lasers don't just operate, they perform, they show up to the skin like, yeah, I'm here to disrupt time, space, and maybe your entire understanding of physics. But here is the science truth. Lasers don't do that. Real lasers are not explode roads of justice. They are streams of highly ordered protons. They are focused, clean, monochromatic, kind of like that super punctual friend who never raises their voice and somehow gets something done perfectly. Real lasers don't shout, they whisper with precision. <laughs> now, imagine trying to show that in a movie, a quite accurate beam of light doing its job. Would Audiners cheer? Probably not. Which is 
Why Hollywood goes? Let's add spark, make it cut through buildings, make it scream. And hey, I get it. No one wants to watch a calm red dot doing delicate surgery for two hours. But there is a part of me that wishes we could strike a balance. I mean, come on. When's the last time you saw a laser bend around a corner in real life? Never. But it's light. It goes straight. But in movies, laser curve. They dance. They sometimes wait dramatically for the hero to finish their speech. Incredible, incredible restraint for a physics-based energy form. Let's not even talk about the sound. Real lasers don't make sound, but in movies, every time laser shows up, it's like vroom, something like that. You would think it was the it was a lightsaber orchestra tuning up backstage. I'm convinced there is a Hollywood rule. If a laser fires, don't make noise. Did it even happen? Then there is the idea of laser swords. Listen, I grew up on Star Wars too. Lightsabers are awesome, but scientifically, a blade made of light just that stops a certain length. Without a mirror, a lens or a medium. That's like trying to have a river that ends in mid-air. It doesn't work. Unless you invent a magic plasma or some exotic particle confinement, which hey, some fan theories do try to explain. Props to them. But let's back to the throne. The laser sequences here aren't just tech. They are ritual. They elevate the moment. It's like the laser is saying, this isn't just science. This is mythology in motion. And maybe that's the point. Movies aren't bound to what's possible. They are driven by what we wish could be possible. So instead of nitpicking, maybe we can laugh a little. Because deep down, we know lasers don't create solid bridges midair. We know you can't digitize someone just beaming light at them. But for those 120 minutes, we want to believe, we want the spectacle, the glow, the epicness. And that's the film wins. It doesn't just bend light, it bends our expectations. But you know what I always wonder. What if they hadn't used lasers in Tron? What if it was something more alien, like quantum form, wandering into shapes or materials that configure in real time? Imagine a technology that's visually mind-blowing, but also rooted in fridge theoretical physics. That's the kind of twist I'd love to see more of when imagination meets research in a dark alley and says, let's make something weird. So yeah, movie lasers are absolutely over the top, but they are also fun. And sometimes fun is the beginning of curiosity. I met people who became physicists because they saw something ridiculous in a movie and doubt. Wait, could that ever be real? And that spark, that's their fiction because a getaway to science. And that my friend is sword all the glowing light bridges in the world. Uh, I need a drink of coffee.